All right. Welcome, everybody. Today we're going to do Chapter 12 on Information Systems Development. Let me pull up our slides for the day. So we're going to talk about business processes, um, how business processes can be you know, uh, analyzed and refined and how information systems support those business processes. And because of that, we ultimately need to um, develop information systems. And so we'll talk about uh, different development methodologies. We'll talk about um, the pros and cons of, of one methodology over the other methodology. But as you know, someone that's going to be in the workforce, if you're not already in the workforce, you will be involved with developing new technology. Um, you might take the lead of it. You might be a manager who is implementing, uh, implementing that new technology. You might be a business analyst who's, who's working in between those really technical people and the end users. Um, but taking an active role in understanding how uh, both business processes are developed and how information systems are developed and managed is important. So we're going to talk about how business processes, information systems, and applications are developed. We're going to talk about how organizations use business process management. We're going to, going to briefly touch on business process modeling notation. Uh, the book goes over this in detail. And I'm actually not going to, to cover that a lot. Um, so that's something that you can do on your own. Um, but it, it's something that I think is great for, you know, on the work, on the, on the work site and when you're, when you're actually working, but in, for the purposes of, of our lecture and, and uh, quizzes or exams, things of that nature, I'm, not, I'm actually not going to talk or ask questions about uh, business process modeling notation. We're also going to talk about the traditional development methodology called the uh, systems development life cycle. We'll go through each of those different phases. We'll talk about uh, what it takes to really have a successful systems develop, uh, development life cycle project. And then we're going to talk about how the, you know, the, the shortcomings of the SDLC and how there are new rapid development, agile methodologies like Scrum that can overcome some of those problems. So business process management, this is really about looking at, way, looking at what you do and the way you do things and thinking about your customers. How are your customers going to, to view your processes? How can you make those processes better for your customers so that, that really your customers have the best experience as possible? Uh, these processes are activities that connect to each other. So there's something that you take that, you know, it, it, as an input and you do a process and transform it and it becomes, you know, the output. So there are always opportunities to improve what you do. Um, think about the way that, that, that you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There's a process that you go th through. You know, you uh, open the bread, you put the bread on a plate, you get the peanut butter, you get the jam, uh, then you get a, a knife uh, and a spoon because we're not gonna stick the knife in the jam, we're not monsters. So you get a knife and a spoon. Uh, and then you spread the peanut butter, you spread the jam, and then you put the two halves together. So, you know, that's the process of making, making a peanut butter and, and jam sandwich. Well, maybe there's like a better way. Maybe there's a way that you could look at that process and improve the process. Maybe you find that, uh, you know, th uh, there's, there's a different technology that can help you in that process. And maybe that technology is like, you know, the Goober's peanut butter and jam uh, mixture that you just have, you know, it's jam and peanut butter all together and it, you know, one scoop, spread it out and, and you're done. Maybe that's the new technology that you find that makes it more efficient and your customers really like that. So we're going to talk about um, these things as, as we look at uh, business processes, how they relate to information systems. So if you remember our discussion of uh, uh, when we're looking at databases and how when we're creating data models, 
there there are these relationships, these uh, one to many, many to many relationships. Well, one business process can potentially use many different information systems. Uh, a single information system can support potentially many business processes. So there's uh, this many-to-many -many relationship between business processes and information systems. However, some business processes that we do, some things that we engage with, they don't actually require an information system. Um, but every information system is there to support at least one business process. So this is kind of if you model the, the relationship between business processes and information systems, this is kind of uh, what it would look like on this you know, crow's feet diagram. This is a pretty good video uh, that talks about business process management. It's actually kind of like a commercial from Oracle. They have a business process management suite of tools to help you with your business process management. Take you know four minutes, pause this video, in your slides, click on that link and, and watch this video. I think it I think it does a good job of kind of outlining things. There are different development methodologies that will help you um, manage what you're doing, help you uh, manage all of your business processes. There are some development methodologies that will help you develop information systems and then some that will help you develop applications. So we're going to look at, you know, business process management really is kind of only about managing your business processes. It, it doesn't help you develop information systems. It doesn't help you develop applications. Uh, we're going to talk about another methodology called the SDLC. And this helps you develop your information systems. It helps you develop applications. However, it does not help manage your business processes. It's just not set up to do that. Now, the final methodology we're gonna talk about is called Scrum. Uh, Scrum actually helps you develop business processes. It helps you develop information systems and applications. So this is, uh, you know, today Scrum is that preferred methodology because it helps you kind of do all of it. Here's kind of a chart that, that, that talks about the role of different development personnel, right? Um, you have, for your application development, you have those programmers and the database de designers, the, the systems analysts that, that help you develop those applications. For uh, on information systems, you have you know a, a, a technical systems analyst, but also you have that more business oriented business analyst, uh, that, and that business analyst really is about looking at ensuring those business processes uh, and those information systems kind of are aligning, that they're aligning with whatever the goals and objectives of the organization happens to be. So. You know, depending on the, your role going forward, um, you might not be an information systems major. You might be, you know, more of a business major. You might be able to take part in this business analyst role. Maybe you're more technically oriented and you're going to be a systems analyst. Or maybe you're very, very technically ori uh, oriented and, and you could be actually a, a database designer or a programmer. So organizations when they're engaging in in the things that they do uh, there are reasons why looking at your business processes how you do things reasons why you would want to change what you're doing one reason is you want to improve the quality of what you're doing uh, and so if you want to have you know higher quality then um, that means you're going to change some of the things you do. Maybe you're eliminating some steps. Maybe you're adding some steps. You might also want to change your business process because there's a new change in technology. And that new change in technology means you need to adapt. And so uh, as that new technology is there, you're adapting to it, and it, it, it means that you're changing you do, how you do things. There might also be some sort of change in the, the fundamentals of your business. 
There could be a new market that emerges. There could be new product lines that you're wanting to, to, to launch. There could be changes in your supply chain or your partners. There could be new policies implemented. Um, there could be organization changes. Um, you, you could have a new, a new organizational structure. Uh, you could have a, a partnership with an international company and or you could launch your company to be a more international based company and, and this causes you to want to change how you do things. So there are all sorts of reasons why uh, our processes are continually changing. And so business process management is all about understanding that, making the best of that and, and finding the best changes for your processes. Here are the four stages of business process management. Uh, these, this is really a, a, a cycle, right? Like you, you start by looking at what do you currently do? And you map out and you model out all of your different processes. Um, you're, you're, you assess them and you look at them and say, you know, is this, this is how we do things. Next, you look at um, how you might make those changes by creating different components. Uh, maybe there's a, a component that's more, you know, just a structural uh, way that you do things. But maybe there's a there's a component that says, you know, hey, we actually need an information system here uh, to help us do the thing that we're doing. And so that's when it would go over to a systems development process where um, you can develop a system to help you with your with your business process. Then you're looking at implementing that that new change, that new process, and then you assess it and you say, how did we do? Is this working? Is there a better way to do things? So once you assess those results, you're not done, right? It's all about continually getting better. So after the results have been assessed and you say, hey, this is great, but you know, we could actually make some changes here or we could, uh, we're not doing this very good. So let's look at being better in this particular area. So it's a, it, it's a, it's, it's a cyclical process because you're, you're continually changing, um, evolving, updating, uh, managing it so that you can have the best experience for your customers, which hopefully means that you're more successful as an organization. When you're going about this uh, business process management, there's a whole set of tools that help you model it. And there's software and, and different things that help you model your business processes. Um, this is called business process modeling notation. It's kind of a standardized way that you can go about, you know, mapping out how you do what you do. Um, we're actually gonna uh, skip this part uh, because it, while it might be useful um, you know, on the job, uh, for the purposes of the class, uh, uh, we're not going to cover it. So let's talk about the systems development life cycle. Uh, the systems development life cycle is a very systematic approach to developing information systems. As you're going about and looking at your business processes, if you see, hey, we need something to help us with this particular aspect of our business. And that something is an information system. Um, we're not tracking our customers very well. And so we need an information system to help us track our customers. So the, the systems development life cycle helps you understand exactly you know, what you need um, as, as you're planning your, your, your new information system. It helps you define it. It helps you determine the, you know, the different requirements that are gonna go into the system. It helps you design those different components. And then lastly, um, you're, you're implementing the system and then ultimately maintaining the system for the rest of its life. So this is, a, this is sometimes called the waterfall methodology, because you know, as you go from uh, you know, one level to the next level, it's, it's, it's downhill and it's, it's very hard to go back up to the level above. So you have to make sure that in these early um, levels, these early phases of the SDLC, that you have thought things through and planned things very, very well. So this is a little like, um, think about building a house. When you're going to build a house, 
you know, once the house has been constructed and done, uh, you know, saying, hey, we should have put a bathroom here. And you can't just say, oh, let's put a bathroom here and have a, a bathroom be somewhere magically, right? Um, unless it's an outhouse. But uh, if you didn't plan for that bathroom, if you didn't think that you might need a bathroom there, then it wasn't plumbed and then there, the, the electricity wasn't run to that area and the structure's not right in that area. So it's, uh, you have to really systematically plan out what you want to ultimately get the end product of what, of what you desire. So under thinking about, you know, what are the things that you might want in your in your dream home? Um, you know, do you want a pool? Well, maybe you need to as you're going and building a new home, you need to plan for that. You need to find a a, a lot that will allow you to have that. Um, do you want a crazy theater room? Do you want a gym in the house? Do you want a bowling alley? Um, do you want the amazing you know garage that hides cars under the floor? Uh, do you want to slide on the side of your stairs so your kids can zoom down it all day? You know, you have to un have an idea before you go and just build a home. You have to have an idea of everything that you might want. Some things might not be feasible. You know, maybe this, uh, you know, the garage with it that brings up cars is, is not feasible. Um, even though you might want it, maybe that, you know, having the bowling alley is more important to you. So... Yeah, it's always about you know selecting what can we do, what's feasible, and what are the things that are most important. First st stage of this uh, process is this uh, system definition stage, right? You are looking at your your system. You're defining the system, the goals that you have. Uh, you're looking at the feasibility of actually you know, making this information system. You're putting your team together. You're planning the project and looking at you know, how much is this, this new information system going to cost us? Um, so you're looking at cost feasibility. Um, it, it, can you actually, is it feasible that the things that you're wanting in the system that you can actually develop them in, in, you know, with the development costs and the operational costs. You're looking at schedule feasibility. Is it scheduled to like complete your project? Uh, if you need something now, um, is, it, is it feasible to have all of the features that you want if you need it now? If you need something a year from now, um, is it feasible to have all the features that you want a year from now? So what is your schedule like? Is it feasible to develop your system within that schedule? You're looking at also the technical feasibility. Do you have the, the technical knowledge experience to be able to, to develop the system that you're wanting to develop? And you're also looking at organizational feasibility. So does this new system fit within your, your current organization's culture? Is it feasible that, that what you're building um, and developing will, will meet the needs and, and of the organization? You're also in this phase, you're forming the team, you're planning the project. So you have information systems professionals, you have user uh, representatives that are all coming together to, uh, to, to work on a project. This is a, this is a big undertaking to go out and um, to you know, develop a new information system. Uh, that team might change over time. So you have to have all of these people, all the managers and analysts and programmers and testers and end users, they have to be engaged throughout the entire process. Uh, and then you have to start setting up your plan. Um, what tasks are you going to have? What type of personnel are you gonna need? Are there dependencies? Do, does someone need to get something done on, on part of this project before the other person can? What type of schedule are you going to have? Once you exit that step and go to the next phase of the SDLC, this is the requirements analyst, uh, analysis phase. You're looking at uh, interviewing people to see, hey, what do you need? You're, you're looking at the existing system. What does the existing system do that, it's, that, it, that, it, that we need it to do differently? Um, are there new forms that need to be created? Do we need to run new reports? 
you're looking at uh, new applications, how those applications might function. Uh, you're looking at security. Um, you're, you're creating that, that data model of, of components. You're looking at, uh, you know, how are these things in the new system going to be related? This is the most important phase in all the, the SDLC. All this development process is this requirements analysis. If you don't get this right, then your system is not going to do what you need it to do. If you need a drop-down menu, uh, this is the time where you have to determine that you need a drop-down menu. You know, uh, that's a little like saying, oh, we should have put a bathroom here, right? Later on, it's, it's really, really hard. It's easy to put a, put a drop-down menu and plan for that in this requirements analysis phase. It's much harder if you do it later on. Prototypes come into play in this phase. Um, they help you get experience. They help you assess um, whether you have the technical and organizational feasibility to do the project. Um, they help you define the requirements. So um, prototyping is, is great, right? You can have a prototype of, of a system that you, that you quickly create and kind of use that to assess, hey, at this point, is, are we going to be able to do this? Is this going to be, you know, before we spend all the money and, and you know, build our whole system, is, is it going to work out? So this is uh, important in this phase. Part of this phase is interviewing people, looking at what they do, um, asking people, hey, what do you do at, at this? How do you take those customer recommendations and what do you do in your current system? And so interviewing is just a visual element. This is just a button click from uh, of the space. If you, if you've ever seen a movie, right, you have it. It's a, it's a fun movie to watch, but it takes just two minutes and and watch this. Uh, this point about interviewing. Uh, the point is, is it's sometimes hard to ask people what they do. Uh, sometimes it's better to actually watch what they do. People have a hard time describing uh, their role. And so sometimes watching is a little bit better than just flat out asking people. The next phase of the SDLC is the component design phase. So from your you know, approved user requirements you know, actually, uh, now those requirements become hardware specifications. They become program specifications. You are designing a database. You're looking at procedures or job definitions. Um, you know, prototyping can come into play in this phase as well. But the team is going to determine what hardware you're going to need. Um, when you're looking at the program design specifications, uh, are you going to be able to just get some off-the-shelf software? Um, are you going to be able to get maybe some off-the-shelf software and just alter it? Or maybe you actually need to get, you know, custom-developed from the ground up software. So this all happens in this component design phase. Uh, job descriptions are talked about, uh, detailed responsibilities, skills, training, all of this happens in this component design phase. Next phase of the SDLC is the implementation phase. So, you know, up to this point, you haven't actually built a system yet. But right now, in this implementation phase, you are, are building the components. You're doing unit testing. You're trying to integrate the components and making sure that they function properly. You're doing um, tests, um, so you have you know test plans, and you're making sure that the system is, is, is functioning as it should. And then ultimately, you're um, going to start converting to a new system. Uh, there are different approaches to convert to a system. One approach is uh, a parallel uh, approach. This is where you have your old software system, your old information system. And you're still using your old information system, but at the same time, you start to implement a new system. And so if I'm entering, you know, you know customer data, it's customer data in the system, and then all the updated system customer data. So you're using both systems simultaneously. Um, it's, it's a safe way to go. If there's anything wrong with the, with the new system, you still have the old system that's working on it. 
uh, but it's very expensive to bring everybody into the system and what it causes our employees to do with their job files. So college has to be safe and uh, even though know, it's this kind of a safest approach. Another approach is the quantitative effect approach to implementation. This is when uh, you know everyone goes home on Friday afternoon and your your development team and your 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 information systems people are there over the weekend uh, and they get the get the old system online and they put the new system up. So there's it's you know hopefully everything works, fingers crossed there are no problems with the new system. Uh, because the old system is done. So this is uh, this is a high risk kind of approach um, to to implementation, but some companies will, will choose to do it this way. Another method is to use a phased approach to convert to the new system. So the new system is kind of rolled out in, in, in different phases and modules where you know we start using the the customer service piece now, and then we start using the um, uh, you know the data management piece, and then we start using so it's it's a a slow transition from the old system to the new system. So you're uh, as you're turning on those new components in the new system, you're turning off the old system and those components as well. So it's um, you get you kind of test, uh, and, and, and it helps you to take, take a slow approach. It's not like the parallel approach, but it's a slower. A safer approach to um, uh, implementing that new system. The last um, uh, approach methodology is the, the pilot. So this is where you have an entire system that's we're going to have just this team using, or we're going to have just this location, or, or Albuquerque being is going to use the new system. We're going to pilot it, and, and we're going to see how it goes. Everyone else is still in the old system. So this. Um, limits your, your, your exposure to failure. You know, if, if there's a failure that happens with the system, it's only really that team or that, 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 that limited um, part of the business that was using it. Uh, everyone else is still on the old system. Once you determine that, they, that the pilot was successful, then everybody can convert over to the new system. DLC is the maintenance phase. So this is where the new systems are right now. This is so this is where uh, all of the information systems that you're currently using, they're all in this maintenance phase, right? They've been implemented, we're all using them, and now we're looking at them and, and making small changes, small updates, little you know, enhancements. Um, we might need to fix some failures via patches or, or service packs, maybe some new releases for that for that software system, that information system. However, you know this is the, this is where you're li you're living in it. You're you're there. You're just making sure that doing the, the, the necessary upkeep to make sure the system is functioning properly. This is not the time when you're like, hey, I wish I had that donkey on my knee, right? Um, it's 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 almost impossible to say, oh. oh we're in this maintenance phase, let's get a brand new drop down menu. You have to plan for that um, in the beginning. In order to have a successful uh, SDLC project, there are some kind of key things to consider. One of them is having a work breakdown structure. So this is looking at everything that you're going to do and breaking it up into small manageable tasks. So that you can estimate how long that task is going to take, how much money it's going to cost, who's going to be responsible for that task, and then every task has deliverables. You're taking this big giant project that we're developing this new information system, and you're breaking it into smaller and smaller chunks until you can get an idea of, you know, exactly who's doing what when. Um, you're estimating time, costs. You know, you're looking at your your plan, and you're adjusting for trade-offs, and then there are all sorts of technology challenges you have to deal with. So here is an example of a work breakdown structure um, uh, for your SDLC, where um, the firm has looked at, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're assessing the feasibility here. We're going to plan the project. These are some of the deliverables that are going to result from that. Uh, this is another part of this successful um, managing a successful SDLC. Uh, this is looking at time. So 
of us can to try to fill in uh, assigned resources in a critical path. So if this person is working on this particular thing, um, how long have they been working? How long do they get to work on it? And what do they need to do there before the next person or before the next step can, can happen? So this just looks like at your, your project plan and those resources and what's a, you know, tiny amount. You're always going to have trade-offs, things that, that come up that you have to adjust, right? Um, there, there is this trade-off between time and, and, and scope. So I could have uh, a system that does absolutely everything. However, it's going to take a long time to build a system that does absolutely everything. There is a trade-off between time and cost. Um, if I need something done immediately, um, then the costs are going to be really high. If I can wait a little bit longer, perhaps I can get those costs down. There's also a trade-off between you know, cost and scope. I can have everything I want in the world on that software project, but it's going to cost me a lot of money. So if I don't have a lot of time, but I want a lot of requirements filled by that system, then that cost is going to be huge. So that to get to these things are all related to understanding that there's always this trade-off. Um, are you going to are you going to just let it take more time? Are you or are you going to re reduce those requirements? How are you going to adjust things as as you're going along? Development challenges. Um, we'll talk about um, your your. You don't have to manage coordination between people. There's distant times of scale. There's configuration control events and unexpected events and, and team morale problems that you have to uh, manage while you're man managing your project. So coordination, you got different people, different groups um, that might be working independently. So managing how are they communicating, how are they coordinating with each other. Um, you have, might have teams that work in different parts of the world. You might have software developers that work in Mexico, but you're, um, you know, you're in New York, and how are you going to manage the, uh, the coordination between those geographic differences or even cultural differences? There might be delays, so managing those delays. Um, this is where uh, an accurate and complete work breakdown structure can help you uh, manage the coordination of your project. This economies of scale. So adding more people to a late project will only make the project bigger. Um, and throwing people at it is not the problem. It's like, oh, you guys are not done yet. You're not finished with that project. Well, here's five more people. Cool. Great, thanks. Now we have new people to train and more coordination and you know more you know, interpersonal problems. So uh, just adding more people is not the solution for, for a project that's going over time or, or over budget. Um, this is, this is a, a, a real challenge. Configuration control is all about um, your management policies, your practices, all the tools that you're using to maintain control over your project resources. A lot of stuff comes up. Um, you might get new management. Technology might change while you're building a new system. There could be a disaster that causes you to do things completely different. Um, you know, think about um, the, the, the coronavirus outbreak that caused um, people to have to work entirely differently. They couldn't work the same way. They had to change what they were doing. So, that, so a disaster like that um, is an unexpected event that you have to be able to actively manage and, and, and um, and change and shift and, and deal with as they occur. You might lose some critical people. Um, you might have a, a, a team morale that, that's, that's declining. So these are all unexpected things that can that are challenging for uh, a project team. The SDLC is is really fun but a favorite for other development methodologies. Uh, I've always used first. SDLC is is not good with adapting. Um, and it's not
not good for developing something. You want to build a farm, you grow a little bit, plug it. Um, and so it isn't exactly what they want because DLC is not really good for developing a system. Um, because uh, it doesn't do well with handling changes later in the game. Uh, FDLC is also really risky because it assumes that down the road your requirements are never going to change. So even if you plan really well, you know, you could have some change in your business fundamental that, that makes your requirements change and you could be, you know, almost implementing the system and have that change and the SDLC is, is, is no good at kind of handling that situation. So there are alternatives to the SDLC. Um, these alternatives, like rapid application development and enterprise process, uh, extreme programs from, these are all very flexible, dynamic, agile development methodologies that uh, welcome changes in requirements. They were delivering um, uh, frequent versions of a product that, that actually work, that a person can then actually use it and, and give you feedback on how it's working. You were able to de design things as you go, test as you go, you're working very closely with the customer for the duration of the project. Um, this, this is, these types of development methodologies are great not only for developing an information system, but you can use them for your business processes and your applications that you're developing as well. So I want you to take, I think this is maybe nine minutes or so, and this is a really good overview of what, you know, like agile development, but what Scrum in particular. Scrum is that, that is the, one of those agile development methodologies that, that's very, um, very effective, very popular, and you'll see it a lot in a lot of organizations right now. So pause this video, go to your slides, and uh, watch this, this, this video. some of those Scrum essentials. Uh, the video did a really good job of kind of going over those things, but uh, in Scrum, your, your work periods are, are pretty short, right? You can break down your, um, how long you're going to work on specific tasks. Um, uh, you know, one to four weeks, uh, maybe up to eight weeks, but that those work periods are very short, and then you're turning around something at the end of that work period. Um, or you're constantly meeting every day. You're meeting in order to stand up at a daily meeting, and, and you're saying, okay, this is what I did yesterday. This is what I'm going to do today. Well, these are the things that are keeping me from being as successful. So everyone is getting together for a quick meeting every day. You're talking about how everything's going. You're doing frequent flex tests. You're... Um, delivering working versions of, uh, of, a, of a product or of a system um, in, in a very short time frame, right? And then it's, you know, rinse and repeat. It's, hey, okay, here's this working version. Here's the feedback from the customer. They say that, you know, they want some changes here. Awesome. Let's, let's go do it. Here's the people that we need. Here's the tasks that we need to do. Let's, let's go through another cycle. And this can continue until the project is is really over. So here's kind of what this looks like. You have your, your, your product owner. You have your prioritized requirements list. Hey, well, these are the ones that are your most priority. You're looking at these are the ones that we're going to choose to deliver. Here's those daily stand-ups and then you're working. And then you, at the, at the end of the period, you're, you're looking back and saying, how did we do? Um, what else can we do? Um, th this works great because you're giving people independence and accountability. Your team is empowered for this process. Um, uh, you, your, your goal is to remove all stumbling blocks. You're removing things that, that are keeping it from being successful. And then you're trusting your team to do the things that they said that they needed to do. And then you're meeting again, so there's a lot of accountability. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, you're, 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 there's a lot of progress that happens in, in a short amount of time. And so if you're building a whole system, it's, it's 
it seems like they're building it in small little modules, but let's build this part first. And then let's add on this other piece. And you can continue building it in this way until you are, until you're done. This happens when the customer says, hey, it looks great, we're satisfied. We don't need it anymore. Maybe the project's out of money, we're out of time. Uh, Scrum is great because even if it's you're out of time or out of money, uh, you still have a working version. Whereas with the SDLC, if you're out of time, out of money, there's no working version yet. Um, it, it, it's, so you have to keep spending more time and more money until you have that working version. With, with Scrum, at least, it might not have everything that you need. It might not have that drop down that you need, but it does have what you need. Um, and then in the next iteration of it, you can get the drop down. You can get the, you, the, you know, the functionality. You can get the organization. You can get all those things, you know, a piece at a time. Last thing we'll talk about is kind of, you know, looking forward. Um, kind of what does IS development look like in 2029? Well, the trend of, of, of artificial intelligence helping inform the things that we're doing, um, using machine learning to understand systems and programs. Um, this is going to really continue. Um, this will change the way that systems are actually created, and we might not need to create systems from the ground up. Uh, rather, we can train an AI using machine learning, and that, that system um, through the training we might actually code and say, hey, do this, do this. This, will, this system itself will kind of learn how to do the things. Um, and, and so that's, that's a big change of, of how stuff will develop. The, the nature of the IT industry will change. It will be much more agile, um, uh, much more web-based and cloud-based. Um, we won't have as many you know, in-house servers that are hosting uh, traditional SDLC projects, but it's going to be uh, much more flexible and dynamic in the web-based services. Uh, new systems can come online really, really fast. New changes can, will be able to happen really, really fast. Uh, the only kind of limiting factor is our ability to cope with a new system that's you know, things change so frequently. The plant managers got used to the last one. Why is it changing so frequently? And so we'll have to be able to you know, uh, cope with uh, how rapidly the systems um, can change. Okay. That is all for this uh, chapter. Thank you, everybody, so much. Um, and remember, you have quiz, exam coming up. Uh, so there will be a quiz on this material. There's going to be an exam that covers the last four chapters. So make sure you're preparing for that. But thank you.